prime topics deal with the Dome of the Rock being completely removed from the Temple Mount. And I'll also talk about the Third Temple being built as Bible prophecies foretell. This first Bible fact deals with the foretold seven-year agreement of Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, the seven-year agreement, which makes no mention whatsoever of the third temple at all. In fact, there is no Bible prophecy which even remotely says that even the words third temple must be mentioned at all in the coming seven-year agreement of Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. So the body of Christ needs to not be stuck on expecting to see the third temple topic even mentioned in the coming seven-year agreement. It's not required, biblically, to be mentioned. And also, the Dome of the Rock itself, still in my first category here, the Dome of the Rock itself is also not mentioned anywhere in the Bible, nor does the Bible even remotely mention the concept of the Palestinians or the concept that Palestinians are to live in the Gaza Strip, for that matter. None of this is mentioned in the Bible. So that's the first key Bible fact, which is that the Bible prophecies do not require at all any mention of the Muslim Dome of the Rock, nor even the mention of the Third Jewish Temple itself, to be mentioned within the actual seven-year agreement itself. Now, on the other hand, is it possible nearing seven-year agreement actually could include these topics of the Third Temple and or the Dome of the Rock. Is it possible for the seven-year agreement to even lay out some detailed plans for both the Third Temple and the Dome of the Rock to coexist side by side? This kind of seven-year agreement that would mention all of that, for example, is entirely possible. But, as I stated, it is not required to be mentioned at all according to Bible prophecy. So, as I've stated specifically in at least one video at YouTube, it is highly probable that the seven-year tribulation period will actually begin with the Dome of the Rock sitting perfectly in its current place, untouched. So that's the first topic today, that no Bible prophecies say that the topics of the Third Temple or the Dome of the Rock have to be mentioned at all in the coming seven-year agreement of Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. Now here's the second Bible category this morning, the second Bible topic, and more pointedly, as to why the building of the Third Temple excludes the Dome of the Rock's existence altogether. That is, that even before the Third Temple will be built and completed within the first three and a half years, as shown in Revelation chapter 11, verses 1 and 2, even before the third temple is completed by the middle of the seven years, then we know that the one-day war of Ezekiel 38 and 39 must definitely take place first. And we know also it will occur within a matter of weeks into the seven-year tribulation period, as Revelation chapter 6 verses 13 and 14 show, which Revelation 6, verses 13 and 14 correlate exactly with Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 19, verse through 21. Ezekiel 38, verse 19 through 21. Let me back up a second and say that. I'm throwing a lot of uh, 
details at you, but it bears repeating. Even before the third temple will be built and completed within the first three and a half years, then we know that the one-day war of Ezekiel 38-39 must definitely take place first, within the first three and a half years. So, my next point, importantly, is that during this one-day war on Israel's own mountains, just weeks into the seven-year tribulation, as I've stressed, we also know from Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 19, that God will cause a great earthquake to take place in the land of Israel on that very day of the one day war. Now, as I've said before in broadcasts and at least one video at YouTube, it is highly probable that after the dust settles in Israel from the one day all out war on Israel's own mountains, and with Israel being miraculously the last man standing, the victor, It's highly probable that that divinely timed earthquake in the land of Israel on that same day will have caused the Dome of the Rock to instantly collapse into a heap of rubble for the whole world to see at that point. In fact, during this earthquake of Ezekiel chapter 38 verse 19, God could even cause the earth itself, of course, to open up a bit for the Dome of the Rock to literally fall inside the earth completely out of view anymore. Instantly. Gone. So again, this one day war on Israel's own mountains, along with the divinely caused earthquake on that same day, will all take place within a matter of weeks into the seven year tribulation period. It could be a few months three, four, five, eight months could be, into the seven-year tribulation period, everything I've just described. Dome of the Rock gone, one-day war, all taking place in a matter of weeks and months into the seven-year tribulation period. And, as I said, with God himself being personally responsible for destroying the Dome of the Rock one way or another, in a moment of time, as a major sign to Israel and the whole world of his divine hand being upon the end time nation of Israel. Amen. And so during this foretold stunning 24 hour war is when Israel will miraculously wipe out most of Russia's army, which led the attack along with Israel crushing most all of Israel's hostile Muslim military enemies as well. Then at that point, just weeks into the tribulation, Israel will have a clear pathway and without any hindrances from any Muslim nations militarily, a clear pathway for Israel to quickly build its third temple on the Temple Mount within the remaining 24 months or so of the first three and a half years. And as I've stated, Israel will have its temple fully completed before the middle point of the seven year tribulation period as Revelation chapter 11 verses one and two tell us. So that's what will happen. And that's how it will happen. That's the chronology of when it will happen in terms of the Dome of the Rock being divinely removed and with the third temple being built right afterwards and all taking place I know I'm stressing this but all taking place within the first three and a half years of the nearing seven year tribulation period now here's a few more thoughts about all of this and that is that when you Google the search words, Third Temple and Dome of the Rock, 
Google and search them together. Third Temple, Dome of Rock. And then click on the Images tab at the top. And you'll see numerous photoshopped pictures on the internet of the fully built Third Temple sitting side by side on the Temple Mount next to the Dome of the Rock. Both of them together. Photoshopped pictures sitting together on the Temple Mount side by side so that those photos can create interesting conversation and can evoke controversy. However, as I've just emphasized today in detail, there is no way that when the third temple is actually built, that there will be a dome of the rock still standing right next to it. No possible way will the Dome of the Rock be standing right next to the Third Temple. With the Dome of the Rock continually desecrating the Temple Mount as it has for 1,325 years now, since the Dome was completed in 691 A.D., over 1,300 years ago. It's been sitting on the Temple Mount. And again, this bears repeating Ezekiel chapter 38, verses 19 and 23, it specifically states that God himself will see to it that a massive earthquake will take place in the land of Israel during that one-day war, which, in my view, means that no Dome of the Rock will exist anymore once it is time for Israel to build its third temple within the first weeks or months into the seven-year tribulation period. I'll read it. Beginning in Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 18. Ezekiel 38, verse 18, and it's referring to the very day when Russia will attack Israel. And it is God himself speaking here, saying, And it shall come to pass at the same time when Gog, meaning Russia, when Gog shall come against the land of Israel, saith the Lord God, that my fury shall come up in my face. Verse 19, For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath have I spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel. Then verse 23 sums it up. Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 23, with God still speaking about this one single day when Israel will have miraculously just squashed the entire military enemies which had just attacked. And God says that on that day, I will magnify myself and I will sanctify myself and I will make myself known in the eyes of many nations and they shall know that I am the Lord God. Ezekiel chapter 38 verse 23. That means brothers and sisters in Christ that the whole world, including Israel itself, at that point coming, will have the sobering, tangible experience of knowing that the God of the Bible is the true and living Almighty God. And with even 144,000 Jews in Israel at that very point being powerfully saved with eternal life, in their instant recognition of Jesus being their Savior and risen Lord, as Revelation chapters 7 and 14 specifically tell us. Now, lastly in today's broadcast, here's another reason, a final reason, why God will remove the Dome of the Rock's existence from the Jerusalem Temple Mount just weeks into the seven-year tribulation period. 
in order for the third temple to be built. Here's the final reason why this morning. And that is because that on that final day of the seven-year tribulation period, the very final day of that seven years, when the skies part, and the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, and the Divine Son of Almighty God, is seen returning from the heavens on a white horse with the entire heavenly host and the armies of heaven coming with him, then in no possible way will the Lord Jesus arrive back to earth with the Muslim dome still sitting here on the Jerusalem Temple Mount, right next to the awesome and radiant newly built Third Temple. That won't happen. In fact, I can tell you without any doubt that the Dome of the Rock right now is on borrowed time. Since God's divine hand is upon the nation of Israel, and no world leader and no nation can stop powerful hand of God from clearing the way for Israel to build its third Jewish temple. It's foreordained to occur. So here's the ultimate reason why the Bible requires the third temple to be built. That is so the Lord Jesus Christ, who will reign for a thousand years on earth from Jerusalem, will have the fully constructed third temple already being perfectly in its place and ready at the Lord's divine physical return. Amen. And with all of the major end time prophecies today at an apex right now, pointing to the nearing start of tribulation, that the one day war on Israel's mountains is not far away at this point which inherently means that Israel's building of its third Jerusalem temple is also literally very close to taking place in today's end-time generation. 